2019 is going to be the year where I think we'll see artificial intelligence move from being uh, a buzzword focused on, on research and development, uh, moving really deeply into the application space. Um, we're going to see uh, artificial intelligence as a service emerging much more, so people will be able to access the uh, underlying capabilities of machine learning without having to um, uh, be an expert themselves. But this is already happening, but I think this is the year where currently only 6% of companies are really using AI every day. And I think that could very well um, uh, kind of double uh, over 2019. Another key trend um, in, in innovation is really uh, the hand-wringing around, um, around the ethics of innovation, uh, around discussions uh, about privacy and about um, how large companies are using people's data and whether, whether or not um, organizations act in our interest when they deploy technologies. That'll go from a discussion about ethics really much more to a discussion of accountability. Um, I think it's the year where we'll see regulation uh, be pushed. Uh, tech leaders like Mark Benioff have called for more, um, for more regulation and for, for well-designed regulation in these areas. Um, and, and I'm really looking at that area quite critically um, uh, because I think it's really important to know what kind of governance will come out uh, globally as well as in, in, dif in individual countries. And finally, I think that, that this is an act, a, a really key year where we look at innovation as benefiting as many people as possible and we get away from the idea that technology is just for those of us who are lucky enough to be here in Davos or live in wealthy countries and have disposable incomes. Um, innovation is essential to the delivery of the sustainable development goals. That's a key topic here in Davos. Uh, innovation is also critical to helping people who are marginalised or who have a disability. A billion people around the world are disabled. And I think turning innovation towards support of people who are normally excluded is going to be a big trend this year. The Fourth Industrial Revolution uh, is a uh, a way of thinking about the future and the impact of technology uh, that says that we're going through another big phase change in, in the systems that surround us. I mean, that's, that's, let me break that down a little bit more. Um, we've, we've, we've had these periods of intense innovation, technological development in the past that have changed the way that we lived. The first industrial revolution with steam power, the first factories, resulted in mass urbanisation. The second industrial revolution, the car, electricity, the telephone, the jet engine, Re, you know, completely remade society again, created the modern world. And the third industrial revolution with the digital world um, gave us the, the, the ability to communicate, to store and process information that's opened up, uh, you know, the way that you're able to watch this video, for example. However, the fourth industrial revolution is again another shift where we take digital for granted. And so the fourth industrial revolution is really all about the way that innovation impacts our daily lives, and it's also the way that innovation just becomes invisible. It's amazing what we expect and take for granted. And probably the most interesting aspect is really therefore looking at what innovation do we want? Because the fourth industrial revolution is about what we make of it, what the decisions that we're making today. The biggest challenges around innovation today are probably first and foremost, the fact that a lot of um, uh, laws, norms, rules, governance still has to be created to ensure that, that we can benefit from it. Um, we've seen the, the concern over the last couple of years uh, about how uh, large platforms using um, and profiting from user data can create um, risks related to democracy, uh, risks related to inclusion and, and certainly the exposure of individuals to cyber security challenges um, uh, is, a, is a big issue. So the question of the trustworthiness of the organisations uh, who use uh, data, um, given that, that, that data is such an important um, basis of the fourth industrial revolution, that's probably the biggest challenge and risk to technology. And the second uh, big risk is actually just that we, we, we will have higher expectations in the short term and we'll be disappointed. There are a number of emerging technologies which really are buzzwords, like blockchain today, you know, add blockchain to any conversation or company name and you get people excited. But you really have to understand where distributed ledgers can add value for your business or your organisation uh, in order to make sure that you're not just buying into the hype. And so I, I, I think that the, one of the, uh, the second big risk is 
making sure that we're realistic about our expectations and that we, we work very hard at understanding how it, it, this is a strategic strategic goal for an organisation or for us individually and not just something to, to, to play with. The current education system in almost every country around the world um, is built around the idea, particularly public education, um, that, that we need to be able to have basic skills to interact as, as good citizens. Um, innovation, um, creating new things or bringing new things from, from, from other disciplines or, or parts of the world to where we are, um, requires of course the basic education and engagement that, that, that public systems already provide. But it also requires something perhaps more. It requires um, having an entrepreneurial spirit. It requires the ability to understand when and how to take risks. Uh, it also requires networks and ecosystems of, uh, of, of finance, of, of, of different complementary skills, because no innovation is really about one person. There's the myth of the, the genius inventor. Actually, almost all of the, the great things that, and the great people that you can name as inventors work in teams and work across these boundaries. So I think our education system can do more in those regards, more about entrepreneurialism, more about understanding uh, finance and risk, more about working in collaboration, and of course, a lot of the, the, the invention and innovation in the fourth industrial revolution will be, will be built on a digital base. So we definitely need as many graduates and, and, and children and adults trained um, in STEM subjects, particularly in mathematics and statistics, uh, for the great world that data science, machine learning and everything associated with it opens up.